Fox News got a little overly brazen in their propaganda last week, even by their own standards. This is actually really something. So as we covered here last week, activists have taken over a six block area in downtown Seattle in a sort of Occupy type encampment. They're calling it the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone or CHAZ. Here's a report from the scene. Protesters are calling the neighborhood the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, now named CHAZ for short. Behind barricades placed by demonstrators are dozens of Seattle businesses, many boarded up, but outside, tents are popping up, filled with everything from first aid to snacks to face masks. It's not nothing aggressive or violent or nothing like that. We'd, we didn't come out here for any of that. But while locals are seeing murals, film nights, a harm reduction workshop, and supportive local businesses, the masterminds at Fox News see a grave menace, a small tear in the fabric of society, which left unchecked could quickly devolve into a hellscape of militant leftist thugs sowing anarchy and chaos. Well, I mean, mostly they just saw a market opportunity to do what they do best, which is paint a scene of apocalyptic horror with which they could terrify their elderly audience. There's just one problem. The protesters on the scene haven't given them, a, given them a whole lot of material to work with. Nothing a few fake photos can't fix, though. Seriously. First of all, they took an actual image of a man with a gun in the autonomous zone, and they just went ahead and photoshopped him all over the place. Here he is photoshopped into a picture of one of the signs welcoming visitors into Chaz. This image appeared on Fox News' website alongside supposedly straight news reporting with no indication that it had been photoshopped. Here is that same dude again, appearing with vandalized shops in an even more brazen propaganda effort. So those vandalized shop images were actually all taken from the very early violent days of the protests. Nothing like that is reported to have occurred in the autonomous zone since it was taken over by protesters. But in perhaps the most egregious example, this was the display on the Fox News homepage that blared crazy town with a whole bundle of articles about the autonomous zone. There's only one problem. That photo was from Minnesota, not from Seattle. So when they got called out on these blatant errors and manipulations by the Seattle Times, a Fox News spokesperson responded that they had replaced our photo illustration with the clearly delineated images of a gunman and a shattered storefront, both of which were taken this week in Seattle's autonomous zone. A statement that isn't even actually true since the storefront photos were actually taken back on May 30th. They later posted an editor's note to the article saying that they regretted the error. It's also pathetic and obvious and goes right along with their absurd attempts to pretend Antifa was really behind organizing all the protests and really pose some dire threat to real Americans, as if any leftist organization, club, or association was remotely so organized. Trump tweeted about it and, of course, called for Antifa to be labeled a domestic terror organization. Attorney General Bill Barr claimed that Antifa was behind protest violence, but the FBI and journalists weren't able to turn up any evidence of that. In his now infamous New York Times op-ed, Senator Tom Cotton called for bringing in the military and offering no quarter to Antifa terrorists. Republican Congressman Matt Gates sounded a similar note, asking when we can hunt down Antifa terrorists like we do those in the Middle East. Charming. The level of increasingly panicked desperation, of course, tracks closely with new signs every day that the arrayed Fox News propaganda complex has completely lost control of the narrative. None of their normal tricks are working whatsoever. Why? Well, in part because George Floyd's murder was so completely unambiguous. There was no fig leaf of resisting arrest or he reached for something or really absolutely anything that they could use to justify the police's unconscionable actions. It was cold-blooded casual murder in broad daylight with three other cops looking on completely sanguine. Blaming the victim of a police shooting is always go-to move number one. So without being able to run the he was asking for it playbook, they went to the tried and true law and order playbook. Now in the early chaotic days, this one actually had a real shot at working. There were plenty of images of police brutality, but also lots of images of protester violence for the right to work with. What's more, broad swaths of the public really did just want law and order restored. So the new plan was to mouth support for the peaceful protesters while going full militarized police state authoritarian crackdown and playing on a loop the worst and most chaotic images possible. But then the president jumped in to personally create the worst and most chaotic images possible when he gave a Rose Garden speech claiming to back the peaceful protesters while simultaneously on split screen brutalizing them. That pretty much killed the whole law and order narrative. The fact that the protests quickly both grew in size and turned overwhelmingly peaceful 
ended the last vestiges of hope that that approach might work. And so they've turned to photoshopping images, credulously reporting hilariously obvious Antifa hoaxes and whatever this is. Attack and dethrone God. Hmm. You know, you almost feel bad for them until you remember that a whole bunch of people across the country are absolutely terrified that Antifa is actually coming to take over their town at any moment now. In fact, two men working for a roofing company were actually held at gunpoint by a Colorado man convinced that they were somehow connected to Antifa. Of course, they were not. The failure of the Fox News propaganda machine is no small story. This network has perfected the art of terrifying and radicalizing our grandparents for decades now. Their flailing and their grasping on one of the most significant events of our time is part of why attitudes have shifted so dramatically, so quickly on issues of race and policing, and why the public now overwhelmingly backs Black Lives Matter, police reform, and the protest movement more broadly. And it's why Trump and the GOP look to be headed to major losses this November. If the highly skilled tacticians over at Fox News can't save you, nothing can. Soccer's Radar's next.